of the way. <laughs> Why are you moseying on the busiest street in Mexico City? It really means move now. And this is something that I would have never imagined in Dallas. No. Hail! Buenos dias, amigos, from... La Ciudad de Mexico. That is right, amigos. We are in Mexico City. We are back and better than ever over the last <laughs> few days. Unfortunately, uh, I got sick. Very, very sick, very fast, but as fast as it came, yeah. it went. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so everything is doing well here in Mexico City. Today we are talking about some of the most difficult things Ooh. about living in Mexico for us, and obviously we're going to take a humorous uh, angle Hold at up. this, and, and obviously we absolutely love living in Mexico. We've lived yeah. here for around two years. We've been making videos on YouTube for around a year and a half yeah. now, which is which is pretty insane that anybody still watches us. So <laughs> thank what you, weird. amigos. So without any further ado, here are a few things that we've learned here in Mexico or that have just been plain difficult yeah. for us in Mexico. What's the first one? Ahorita. Now, what did <laughs> you learn that ahorita meant? When well, we've mentioned this before, but we learned in school, ahorita, or if you look in a book, a yeah. textbook, at least, for Spanish across the world it means now or right now. In Mexico... What it really means <laughs> is never. So again, <laughs> building on these layers, uh, we couldn't have been more wrong in our first assessment of the word ahorita. We were told, yeah, we'll be there ahorita. And like, okay, we're like, great, now, right? And like, it actually means never. Next on the list is con permiso. Now, when we first got to Mexico, I feel like we both thought this was a very respectful way. In English, it may be similar to um, saying pardon me, or just a very friendly, polite, formal way to say excuse, excuse me, me when you're, um, particularly when you're moving past yeah. someone on a sidewalk in a store, anything like that. It just means like, technically it means with permission, but it's <laughs> sort of like a very nice way to say pardon me. And it does mean exactly that in Spanish, and this is the layers aspect of it. And we will say some of this has to do with living in Mexico City and the complications but the of chilonga that. in me knows <laughs> that when I say con permiso, I am not saying pardon me. I am not saying excuse me. What I'm really saying is get out of the way. Why are you moseying on the busiest street in Mexico City? It really means move now. <laughs> I, I think some of this is, is, again, Mexico City. I don't know how this is across other yeah, cities in Mexico. It might mean pardon me in other parts of the city, in the state. But I country. think... I mean, maybe maybe if you guys have moved to, to the U.S. and are learning English, it's just learning the sarcasm or learning how one word, depending on how you say it, your tone of voice, your body language, has so many different meanings. Yeah, but it's in just, Mexico City, no one means pardon me. Yeah, it's like everybody is really polite, but there's a lot of hidden meanings sometimes behind that politeness. And along with, this one was from Twitter, we'll, we'll put that one up there, but que, que tenga un buen día. It, it just means like, have a good day. Thanks, have a uh, nice thanks, day. Thanks, have a nice day. And it can mean, and it's a similar <laughs> thing in English. You can say, hey, que tenga un buen día, buen día. And it's just like, have a nice day. Like, you know, have a good one when you're parting ways. Or it can mean like, que tenga un buen día. Eh? And it's like, Get out. Go to hell. <laughs> like, <laughs> Last on our Spanish layers lesson today is muy amable. <laughs> but I think the double meaning really comes in the A. <laughs> As I say that, the because I realize if, if you drop something and someone picks it up for you, for example, you would say like, gracias, que amable. <laughs> but if someone bumps into you and doesn't apologize or doesn't say con permiso or oh, perdón. Someone's just being kind of rude. You would say que amable. Que but amable. it's really in the eh, I think, that really implies like, like you're kind of saying like, wow, really friendly, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> that's a polite way to say. <laughs> you like, jerk. <laughs> yeah. And again, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just maybe we're the jerks. Maybe I'm just a sarcastic a hole <laughs> that is trying to learn Spanish and put my sarcasm into Spanish. But it would I don't be know, the but... same with like um, if someone's blocking the entire sidewalk. I think adding a simple a to the end of this, like compromiso a, it's kind of like, really means get like the... get get out of the way now. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of these, it's in the a. <laughs> Another one that dealing with the Spanish language is just the ability to be assertive in Spanish. No matter how much you learn from a textbook or even from a tutor or a class, there's just some things that you don't learn really until you, you get out on the streets, you're in a real life situation, yeah, and you need the check. Oh yeah, hold on! <laughs> we call that the Romy. Romy, hopefully you're watching. 
<laughs> or the Luis. Now, what is that? What is Oye Hoven? Um, it's when you need the check or if you need more coffee or you weren't given silverware. If you want any of these things, you don't wait for waiters or waitresses to come and check on you. You have to like, <laughs> help! 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 And hit him with that Oye oh, yeah, Hoven. Oye oh, yeah, Hoven. <laughs> and like, if you're not assertive, in Mexico, all joking aside, I feel like you're yeah. not assertive anywhere in any country. Um, it's hard, especially in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, things like waiting in line, I think, is like a difficult thing. We are faced with lines and crowds often, and yeah. there has been several instances where if you're not assertive to step up when the person says, who's next, mm -hmm. um, you will get pushed, pushed around. Right. Um, I think that's part of being in a big city, yeah. whether it be New York City or Mexico City or any mega city in the world, right? There are going to be lines and crowds, and I think learning to be assertive mm -hmm. and to step up and say, I am next, or uh -huh. I was in line, or things like that, really go a long way across Mexico, and particularly in big cities. No matter how big or small the city that you're living in, you're always going to need to hit the waiter with that oye oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Very important is learning Spanish with your hands. Now, if you struggle to speak out loud in a different language other than your native language, me, I have learned very well to sort of create my own form of sign language, but here is the universal uh, top four or five things used in Spanish with Without your hands. Without speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. Uh, numero uno, and along with getting the waiter, and you notice when Hillary did it, she didn't just say, Oye, Hoven, with no hand. It's got to be like a full-on, got to get their attention. Oye, Hoven. Mayday, mayday. Or you can hit them with the, the check. I'm not even right-handed, and I still do the right-handed sign. You still sign, sign that air check. Oye, Hoven. All of a sudden, the waiters will come Universal out of nowhere. Spanish. And to be clear, we are poking fun at this. We much prefer the service here in Mexico because in the States, it's like every two minutes, or they bring you the check before, before you even you order. <laughs> <laughs> no rush. Here's the check. No rush. Take I know you, your time. I know you haven't ordered yet, but here you go. Here's the bill. <laughs> so we do prefer the service in Mexico, but we're still going to make fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> Next on the list, and I am just now learning this in my Spanish layers is the finger nod. Now, sometimes um, this is used by both men and women. It's totally appropriate. Here it is. So if Greg says like, oh my gosh, you remember the other day when we saw that and I start laughing with my mouth full of food? This is the universal yes. sign for yes. yes. You can combine it with a nod of the head. You may do it when your mouth is full or uh -huh. when you're laughing that you uh -huh. can't say, oh my gosh, yes. You just, you just hit him with the, like, the easy finger nod. It's so, once we learn this, when we learned this not long ago, it's so much it's more just, efficient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It makes so much sense. So much less energy than saying, yes, it does. It's just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now this is where it gets really complicated just like with Spanish verbally having layers Spanish the informal sign language if you will has its own layers yeah. and and double triple meanings if you will behind every sign and this one was something we're still adapting to now hit him with the thank you the no thank you and the yeah jerk go ahead and cross the street in front of my car <laughs> <laughs> now there's a slight difference in these that we're still trying to perfect. Yeah, it's like if someone, you're eating, someone says, uh, provecho, provechito, and you've got your mouth full, it's just... That's the thank you. You know, it's, it's thank you, provecho. If someone's offering offering you something and they're trying to sell you something yeah, or whatever, and it's just a something. polite way to say no thank you, it's just, no thank you, it's just, I don't know, it's just all in the head movement. Yeah. And then when we're trying to cross the street, obviously we saw this one all walking 100 kilometers in 100 hours here it's in Mexico City. It's slightly different. It's a hasty go ahead. It's like, an, uh, I'm kind of annoyed that you're trying to cross the street, but I'm nice. I'm gonna let you cross the street anyways. It's just kind of like, come so on. like Go get on the, with your bad let's, self. Let's do it. It's just like, it's the scowl. It's like, go if you're gonna go. go. Yeah, you would go. never. If someone Why? says, <laughs> if someone says provecho, you would never say, yeah, like, uh, ugh. Or you never say like... You gotta like is... duck down behind your hand though. It's almost like <laughs> like if you see bird crap falling from the air, you're gonna be like, ugh! What? It's kind of like that. No. It's like shielding yourself. No, it's not. It's nothing like uh, that. <laughs> it's not? And those are today's Learn Spanish Without Speaking Spanish Spanish Tips from Dos Gringos. <laughs> Next on the list is a sense of directions and distance. Now, I think this one hit us hard when we first set foot in Mexico in Vallarta asking for directions and the directions I don't remember but I would assume and bet money that went something like this 
Ah, para allá, past the Oxo, around that you'll see a big church. Three blocks <laughs> down, you'll see a school with kids inside. Turn that corner, you'll see maybe a Circle K or maybe another Oxo. I can't quite remember. Seven stores down on the left. <laughs> we have found whether it's in Vallarta, Mexico City, or one of the other five, ten other states we've been to, people don't typically give directions based on street numbers or street addresses. Yeah. It's all based on a location or like a proximity to a church or an OXO, yeah, it's which very happens landmark. to be on every other block. <laughs> it's very landmark based. And I think in the States, this is different. I think in the States, it's like, oh, it's between Jones and Smith Street. Uh, the address is 629 <laughs> Westminster Avenue. Westminster Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> but here here in Mexico, I, I don't feel like it's like that. I don't feel like yeah. there are a couple streets here in Mexico City that everyone knows, but other, with the exception of those, I think it's very much uh, more landmark based, mm -hmm. which is interesting, which leads us into the next point, Mexicans and now us. <laughs> Uh, we always ask for directions mm -hmm. on the street, and this is something that I would have never imagined in Dallas. No. In Dallas, Greg made the point before we filmed today that uh, I think you would go into a Starbucks and get free Wi-Fi for your phone mm -hmm. to map yourself there before you would ask someone ask someone on the street. Yeah. Um, and it sort of feels like uh, maybe maybe that's how Dallas was 20 years ago when you would just maybe. stop people, or maybe it's less walkable there and here. Mm -hmm. We're just used to, but um, even our friend Luis here in Mexico City, he'll stop and ask for directions before he would take the time to map himself. It's just easier, it's quicker, your maps may or may not find it correctly, whereas people on the streets are going to know where it is. It's like reverse. I feel like in the States, like as a man, it's like, oh, there's, oh. There's, it's like I'm not asking for directions. <laughs> like I'm not lost. I'm not asking anybody. I'll look it up on my phone and no one knows I'm lost. I know where I'm going, even if you don't. But in Mexico, it's like the reverse. It's like, I will ask for help from a stranger for, I'll ask 10 strangers before I whip out my phone and look at Google Maps. Yeah. There's that sense of pride about like, not looking at your phone, but we love it. It's so interesting, a city with 20 million people for just to, to ask people on the street yeah, it's for directions. People are super helpful. I mean, as helpful as they can be it's when they're so telling weird. you to go three blocks around and <laughs> two blocks. So, but no, everybody is willing to help. Everybody is trying to help. And it, it has that small town feel when you're lost. It does in a lost. weird way. Even in Mexico City, I do feel like people, um, even if it's not directions, even if it's, if it's asking how to refill your metro car mm -hmm. or how how yeah. the bikes work. People I do think are people so are, willing to help. are extremely friendly, which I think in any big city is really refreshing. The point being here for us, or the lesson for you, is don't be afraid to ask for help because people are willing to help. And sometimes yeah. the information on Google on your phone is probably outdated or it's not there. And we've just found like Google just isn't gonna work where like the guy on the street probably has so much more information. He stands yeah. there all day, every day. That's like his, his where he sells his, his pineapples or whatever. He probably knows anything and everything or like the cop at the metro station is so much more has so much more information than google can have yeah. just be willing to help or be willing to ask use google translate whatever you do don't be afraid to ask now we hate to end this video on a down note but that's sad. exactly what we're gonna do <laughs> that's a sad note but uh the most difficult thing about living in mexico and actually like the only difficult thing because none of these things are really difficult they're yeah. just humorous hopefully is not living close to our family yeah, I think this is something that's really hard to sort of account for, or even plan for, if you will, because um, I do think the proximity to our family has changed a lot. However, that said, I actually think that we talk to and communicate with our families more now since we've been in Mexico than when we lived only, I mean, Greg's family less than an hour away, my family just a couple hours away. Um, that's something that is still building, again, like the layers like we talked about. It's something that's still yeah. ever changing, ever evolving. But I do think that's something to consider um, moving abroad. Some of you are amigos mexicanos know maybe you live in the States and part of your family is here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Or you live in Mexico and part of your family is in the States. Yeah. And you guys can really relate to this. Um, it is, it's, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, I do feel yeah. thankful that we only live still just a couple hours fly. We can be... Um, back with our families within a day and I know mm -hmm. I do feel like we're fortunate for that I know that there are soldiers and things overseas that would um, would love to be closer to their families mm -hmm. However, I do think it is it is a struggle for us um, 
it's ongoing. It, it, there's really, there's no remedy. And I think that's hard for us to grasp. Mm. Grasp is like all these other things that are silly and the things that aren't silly that are difficult about us living in a country, um, not our native country. There's sort of like, we can find resolution to those. Mm. And I do think this is an ongoing, ever evolving situation, if you will. Yeah. Um, so our amigos mexicanos, let us know in the comments if you guys feel like this, where you're at with your family and friends, maybe you don't live in the same country and sort of like how you, I don't know if you, you FaceTime yeah. or Skype like I do, my mom 12 times a day. <laughs> and the interesting part about it, or like the, the good thing is we get to share Mexico with our family, yeah. not necessarily through our vid videos, but when they come to visit, like when my mom and sister came to visit, my mom loved Coyoacan. We didn't go to, we didn't get to go to the Frida Kahlo Museum, but she's dying to come back to Mexico City. They love the street candy. Yeah, it's just so funny. Like we love the street candy, and then we we showed it to them. We didn't know if it was just us, but like my mom loved those little spicy mango candies. Yeah, and I the do feel like, like the Mexican in our hearts is proud, <laughs> and like we have a baby glimpse of how you, how you guys, guys feel, feel um, like sharing Mexico with us. Mm. I feel like we get to like relive that in a baby form. We get to share Mexico with our families. Well, amigos, that is all we have for you today. Hopefully, you got a few laughs on this Sunday. We have some fun adventures coming up over the next few days, weeks. Let's just say I needed to buy a jacket. Yes. Amigos, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Click the bell to get notified. Every time. We upload a new video, and we'll see you guys. Tomorrow. Did I do okay? <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing, babe. Another random hand sign I just thought of is like, you want another beer? Cerveza? Okay, now it's Wayne Fiend. We got some shopping to do. Oh, God.